In this session, we'll be speaking about the power and responsibility of choice. And I'd like to start with a quote that for me feels like it contains a lot of what we'll be talking about. In infinity, there is freedom of choice and herein is contained all beauty. Freedom of choice affirms man and man determines for himself the world of effects. This is from Agni Yoga and it is um, infinity 193. Synthesis is choice. Uh, there is freedom of choice in every moment of our day. And this is where we as humanity play our role. And we have a choice about how we play that role in human evolution. And as Maite indicated earlier, we have to act. We have to make those choices and act. In reality, we are making choices in every minute of every day, whether we're doing so consciously or not. On an average day, you decide what to eat, whether or not to go to the gym, how to handle difficult encounters, what relationships to invest your time and energy into, and a host of other situations that require you to make choices. Normally you'll have a great deal of control over what choices to make. Think about it. No one forces you to eat donuts instead of fruit for breakfast or to watch Netflix instead of working out at the gym. But even though you are in the driver's seat and utterly capable of making the best decision for yourself, it isn't always easy. And sometimes for reasons that aren't obvious, at the time, you may make poor choices. Each choice not only defines our own experience of life, it also shapes the impact we have within the world, the world of effects. What we experience in life is the sum total of our conscious and unconscious choices. What if we were fully embracing our freedom of choice and consciously choosing a pathway towards synthesis and beauty? In this session, we will explore the anatomy of choice, reflecting on where and how we might become more conscious in our choice making. We will consider the interplay of choice with creative meditation and imagination as we cooperate more fully with our soul in accessing the cosmic stream to build toward peace, harmony, and synthesis. So what do we know about choice making? Maite's allegory of the China, Chinese farmer illustrates powerfully that as much as we may ascribe good and bad to events, the reality is that we really don't know. And the same could be said of many, if not all of the choices we face in life. In 1996, psychiatrist William Glasser developed choice theory, arguing that we have direct control over the acting and thinking components of our behavior. By being in control of how you act and think, you indirectly influence your feelings and physiology. He says that these four components, that is acting, thinking, feeling, and physiology, consistently work together. If you change one of them, the rest will change accordingly. And we've probably got much experience of this. Viktor Frankl also gave us this powerful message in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, when he wrote, even if we cannot change a situation, we definitely have the final freedom to change our attitude to that situation. So life is a continual stream of choices. 
Some are routine and become habitual. Some are more conscious, demanding more reflection, analysis and consideration. Some past choices continue to support us as creative, heartful co-workers, cooperating fully with life and still contain vibrancy and life-giving forces. Others, maybe time expired, creating stagnation or crystallization in our life. In this latter case, the choice then arises to make a different choice. And sometimes this can be hard to see and accept. Choice is difficult because it also represents sacrifice. Choosing something inherently means giving up something else, something we might want tomorrow or next week, and that won't be available to us if we don't grab it today. When we're presented with many options, we may fear making the wrong decision. This can be translated into simple maths. When there are only two options, we have, to 50, we have a 50% chance of choosing the right one. But when there are five options, our chances suddenly decrease to 20%. Matters, of course, become even more complicated when there are 20 options or more. It's been tested that human cognitive ability cannot efficiently compare with more than five cannot efficiently compare more than five options. So most of us will start looking at the first few options and then stop. Awareness that there may be a better option triggers the urge to find it. However, due to time constraints and human cognitive limitations, we're often unable to engage in the elaborate thought process required to compare and contrast all of the available alternatives. Learning to accept that as we choose, one path may or may not still be available to us as an, is an important part of maturing our choice making. To do this, we need to consider our emotional life. We are beings, as we know, who have access to a wide field of emotions. As part of our life journey and evolution, we hopefully, hopefully learn to get into a healthy relationship with our emotions, using them as the powerful creative force that they are. As we're reminded by the Tibetan in Treaties on White Magic, rule number nine, it is through the astral plane which he in this quote describes as the waters, that we add the quality needed to ignite the inflowing purpose and intention. We activate our desire nature in service of the goal. As he says, condensation next ensues. The fire and waters meet. The form swells and grows. Let the magician set his path, his form upon the proper path. For many of us though, our emotions, the waters, and often on the lower astral plane, can make it extremely challenging to make good choices in our lives. As we work with our attachments, habits, and the unconscious, we have to enter the battleground to confront those parts of ourselves that need to be transformed to enable a good next choice to be made and launched into the world with the best chance of success. With some, with some choices, we may be engaged in the battle for mere moments because the groundwork has already been done in previous times possibly even in previous lifetimes. For others, we may face a seemingly long 
and hard series of struggles as we seek to strip away the karma, the blockages and psychological imprints that hold us back. But why does being conscious of our choice making matter? Free will and therefore choice is the seat of our power and therefore our creativity as human beings. It is the expression of free will. It is our birthright. Some of the most widely known stories from the Bible show us the power and consequence of choice, sometimes not always helpfully. Adam and Eve and the forbidden fruit, Lucifer, the fallen angel, and interest, interestingly, in these two examples, we get an imprint of the negative consequences of choice and the notion of harsh consequences, eliciting the potential of fear. However, Nelson Mandela gives us good advice as a baseline for our choice making. May your choices reflect your hopes and not your fears. May your choices reflect your hopes and not your fears. If we function from a place of fear rather than hope, we are working with a force that will limit us rather than expand us into our natural creative state. We become cautious and may even engage in self-sabotage or procrastination rather than confront a choice that may contain something scary or unknown. So as we, as we reflect on our essential nature as co-creative members of the universe, we are invited to consider our relationship with creativity itself. As most of us know, being creative can be messy and non-linear. And herein lies another challenge for us in our choice making, that of control. Some of us being human, like to only work with surefire outcomes, perhaps holding the mindset that as long as I know what the result will be, I can make this difficult choice. In these days of hyper change and uncertainty, this feeling may be even more acute for many. We may be quite destabilized by the amount of change and feel even less able to make our choices because we truly have no idea where they will lead. The map is ever changing or so it can feel at least on the outer level. On a psychological level, when faced with excessive choice or options, we can become paralyzed into indecision and stasis. Here then, we need to make the journey into love as part of our exploration of choice making. To be aligned in our decision making, we need to engage the heart. At the root of our creative force is our ability to live life through the heart, trusting it to be able to hold everything and to translate everything into an opportunity for learning and joy. Rather than seeking to control outcomes, if we are truly connected through the heart, we can lean into the joy of curiosity, discovery, allness, and a deep faith that regardless of the choice made and its outcomes, we are resourced to make another choice on a higher level if and when the time comes. To find a new point of synthesis, rather than being confined by the black and whiteness 
of perceived polarities. Of course, as well as the heart, we have the role of the will, our ability to commit to the choices we make, to bring the full extent of our first ray of power and activate the will. Roberto Assagioli has been very clear with us about the need to train our will, especially in the world we have created, which is so full of content, distractions and choices. He says, frequently, the individual has not the resources to cope with the hard necessities, to resist the enticements or to avoid the many pitfalls of such a life. Nervous equilibrium is destroyed. The person is overwhelmed by the despondency and a sense of frustration and even despair. And he allows himself to be mastered by his lower drives. In order to remedy the, the, these evils, to eliminate this lack of balance between the outer and the inner powers of man, two generally applicable methods can be used. He says, one is the simpli simplification of the external life. The other is the development of the inner powers. So Roberto gives us some very clear guidance that if we're to get more connected with our choice making, we have these actions to take that will enable us to trust more in those choices that we make. And he recognizes, though, that for most people, it's extremely hard to enact the first of these. The simplification of the external life. And he invites us to focus on the development of our inner powers, the activation of the will. Through a strong and steady will, we can navigate the obstacles and choices of life because we overcome fear. He reminds us also, however, that a strong will is insufficient and potentially harmful. We must add to that two other things, the skill to use our will wisely and also to be dedicated to the greater good. So before we go further with bringing this topic into the search for synthesis, let us quickly reca recap the ingredients of choice making we have already explored, which include focusing on hope rather than fear, simplifying where we can, trusting our heart, adding a good dose of emotion and aspiration and desire, and engaging the will, all of which can help us to stand steady in the face of the many uncertainties and dilemmas facing us at this hugely important time in humanity's and the planet's evolution. So let us now con consider choice making within the context of our role as world service. In Fiery World 2, we are told, in Fiery World 2, we are told that verily, the principle of creativeness produces that greatness which is predestined for the planet, but the choice is in the hands of humanity. Verily, the principle of creativeness produces that greatness which is predestined for the planet, but the choice is in the hands of humanity. As Janet shared in her opening, the choices with which we and humanity are faced call us individually and as a group to this ongoing search for synthesis, impelling us constantly to seek for new, inclusive, wiser, loving understanding 
that unites and includes, so giving rise inexorably to the evolution of the consciousness. It seems to me that one of the first choices facing us as world servers in these times is how we choose to serve and to what extent do we choose to step up and into the service required of us at this time. And here, for most of us, the issue of choice making comes to the fore. How and where do we need to simplify our lives to take our next step as world servers? What do we need to let go of? What fears and obstacles stand in our way? How are we embracing our free will? And where and how are we aligning it with the higher will of the one life? And what type of service are we best placed to offer? As we seek to bring higher levels of synthesis into the world, we are personally brought fully into the polarities that sit within our own lives and the choices these present for us. It could be to do with our families and the pull on our time. It could be to do with our work and how we balance that within the wider service. Or maybe we're lucky enough that our work is fully aligned with our sense of our role and our service contribution. It could be about our discipline around our inner life and the degree to which we are progressing our meditative and subjective impact on the world. So often we see these factors as choices we must make and connect with the disharmony and struggle between them when the search for synthesis is calling us to move ever closer to unity within our lives and within ourselves. As world servers, we often find ourselves on a dual path with one part of us in the higher realms connected to the potential, the beauty and the allness that exists as we let go of our, attention, our attachment to the world of matter and we become ever more creative and causal. The other part of us, of course, is in the world of matter. We are, after all, humans, and we live an earthly life at this time, at least until we evolve sufficiently to release the need for further incarnations. Coming into right relationship with the world of forms and seeing ourselves as part of the divine creative process us, can help us to bring a new point of synthesis in our daily lives and in our contribution. As world servers, we may find ourselves choosing each and every day, or perhaps even in every moment, to stay on the path of service, of bringing light to the world and playing our part in the search for synthesis. To do that, we must continue to confront our relationship with choice making, both on the earthly material level and on the inner level. On the inner level, Agni Yoga gives us much to consider about the power of thought and creativity. We are schooled time and time again about the impact of our thought life and the effect this has on the world we create. Thought is the basis of creativeness. It can be visible and measured. One has to regard thought as the creation of independent action. 
from this, understanding issues a correct attitude toward the consequences of thought. It is often asked why we do not cut off the consequences of a thought, but thought is a newborn entity of the spiritual plane. So we come right back to free will and the right use of free will. The spiritual hierarchy will not interfere with the creation and the impacts of thought, but remind us that a correct attitude is key if we are to ensure that the thoughts we launch into the world are done so with care and right choice making. Firstly, we must choose whether we wish to take a conscious and active part in the continuous journey towards synthesis. We know it is happening, but we can support and accelerate that through the choices we make. The choice to focus our thought life towards beauty and love. The choice to actively participate in visualizing and bringing into manifest form the true expression of life founded on love and beauty. Conceptually choosing to be world servers is one thing. Becoming true warriors and deeply committed servers brings us into conscious connection with our will and the greater will of the one life. Since synthesis lies in choosing to align our will with the will of the one life. It is a cooperation between the two worlds, human and spiritual, spiritual and matter, divine and human, cosmic and mundane. However we describe it, it is this cooperation that brings us ever closer to synthesis. Here we may look at, creative, at the practice of creative meditation as a vital component in that cooperation. For example, through the incorporation of seed thoughts, we train our thought life to deepen understanding and insights and make better choices about our inner and outer life. Through the use of visualization, we activate the imagination through focused dreaming, we see and sense something new emerging. We choose to bring it into being. Through the use of invocation and evocation, we activate the will, striving for alignment between our will and the will of the one life. Practice of creative meditation engages us in the cooperation between the two worlds and represents our choice to be conscious and active co-workers with the, design, with the divine. Choice making is happening in every micro moment of life, consciously and unconsciously. As we search for synthesis, our task is to come into conscious relationship with our choices. To see the areas where we may need to strengthen our will, like muscle building in the gym, it's a practice. To be compassionate with ourselves when we get stuck in the quagmires of humanness. And to utilize this to develop our compassion for others who may also be struggling to make better choices within their lives. To keep on keeping on in the face of our own humanness, celebrating this, yet choosing to continue strengthening the expression of our divinity. I'd like now to offer us the opportunity to take some time to digest and reflect on our own choice making. So I'm going to lead us in a brief alignment and then share some quotes as seed thoughts, inviting us to reflect on our relationship with choice making. 
If you feel inspired by any of these quotes or what has been shared, please feel free to share your thoughts into the chat. So you may wish to have a pen and paper ready to capture any insights that come to you. So let us have a short alignment. As we close our eyes, let's bring our attention to our heart center and connect with our inner sacred space. With each breath, we find ourselves coming into deeper alignment with the universal wisdom. We find ourselves in a deep space of silence. We are listening. We are seeing. We are open to knowing what we need to know. And now in silence, let us connect with some seed thoughts as we reflect on our own choice making.
And let us continue to take a few moments in silence. So we absorb whatever inspiration has been triggered so far in our session. Knowing ourselves to be warriors, spiritual warriors on the battlefield, making right choices to support human evolution. So we invite you to share anything that you would like to share through the through the chat. Um, anything that has inspired you or a question, anything that comes to you. We are now going to take a 15 minute break. So 15 minutes for this next break. And when we come back, we will continue with our offering today. Um, if I can invite you to be as prompt as possible so that we can keep the richness of our sharing and uh, the sessions as they're planned, that would be wonderful. So that will have us back here. We'll, we'll keep the Zoom on. We're not going to close it. So it will stay open for the sharing that you might want to put into the chat. Um, but that will have us back here at just after 10 past the hour. And we'll get underway again at quarter past. Thank you, everyone. 